So much to watch, so little time. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated 2000s TV shows. For this list, we're looking at the most underappreciated TV shows that began airing between 2000 and 2009. Those that may have outlasted the decade are also eligible. Oh man, I'm gonna miss it. You're an idiot. Number 10, Kyle XY. Languishing on ABC Family for three seasons, Kyle XY was one of the network's better shows, both in terms of content and, for the first two seasons, ratings. I barely noticed the discomfort on my face because inside me, something had flipped and I began to feel wonderful. The premise is fascinating, as Kyle wakes up without any memories or life experience, essentially being no better than a baby, albeit one with some pretty unique powers. Kyle XY is more of a teen family drama than a sci-fi series, but the characters are likable enough and improve greatly as the show progresses. On a less restrictive network, Kyle XY could have been something special, or even potentially a huge hit. I don't know what to do. And I'm not sure how any of this here is supposed to help. Number 9. Flashpoint not every series has to be particularly thought-provoking or insightful. Once in a while, a fun, high-budget action romp is more than enough. When do we get an officer dance and EMS immediately? Despite lasting for five seasons, Flashpoint never quite hit the mark with critics, especially in the United States. Nevertheless, this Canadian series centering around an elite task force delivered in terms of adrenaline and tension, while also allowing just enough time to present the highly trained officers as people rather than merely action heroes. Gonna lay down smoke grenades. Good call. Let's disrupt the shooter's visibility. The cast is also pretty solid, with Enrico Colantoni of Veronica Mars fame being the standout performer. We gotta work together here to help them understand what's going on here today, all right? But if this goes badly, we don't have options, you understand? <laughs> Number 8. Nip Tuck From the creator of Glee and American Horror Story, Nip Tuck is a medical drama like none other, one that focuses on two plastic surgeons working in Miami and later Los Angeles. Are you a doctor? Plastic surgeon. Describing a successful series that lasted for six seasons as underrated may seem unusual, but Nip Tuck's name has faded with the years, despite possibly producing some of the more memorable storylines of the decade. We don't do dogs. Not even for $100,000. And 50 more to ensure doctor-patient confidentiality. Perhaps the medical drama label makes it seem like a niche series, but Nip Tuck bucks genre convention by opting for serialized rather than episodic storytelling. Also, Christian Troy is just ridiculously charming. Stop being my doctor. Start being my friend. Number 7. Jericho Some shows are just doomed for cancellation. What are you? What are you looking at? Set in the town of Jericho following a nuclear attack on the United States, CBS's post-apocalyptic epic got off to a really strong start, and largely kept up its momentum for the first stretch of episodes, before going on a poorly timed hiatus that hurt the serial drama's ratings. While Jericho does not exactly offer a unique take on a post-nuclear wasteland, the show does a fantastic job of depicting a small town's effort to survive while in total isolation. After being cancelled following a single season, fans managed to convince CBS to order seven more episodes. Unfortunately, even fewer people tuned in to watch. Number 6. The New Adventures of Old Christine After being Elaine Bennis and before becoming the Vice President of the United States of America, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was a divorced mom just trying to make things work. So do you like the zipper bags better than the pinchy kind? <laughs> We don't have to do the small talk. Oh, thank you. Okay. A CBS sitcom that aired alongside The Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men, The New Adventures of Old Christine somehow managed to produce five entertaining seasons despite suffering through a writer's strike, losing its time slot, and the dreaded Seinfeld curse. It's important to Mommy that you're in a racially diverse environment. Yes, so important that you send them to the white bread school. Old Christine has all the components of a classic multi-camera sitcom, while the experienced cast and modernized family dynamic helped make the comedy feel fresh and timely. Oh, don't look at my ass on the way up, okay? 
No. You know what? Do. No, 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 no. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Number five, what I like about you. Even if multi-camera sitcoms peaked during the 90s, the early 2000s still produced a few laugh track gems. Starring Amanda Bynes as a spirited teenager living with her older sister in New York, What I Like About You blends elements of Friends with Full House's fondness for dishing out life lessons. While a product of its time, the sitcom makes great use of its young star's talents, giving Bynes ample opportunity to show off her comedic timing and charming delivery. Are there better sitcoms from this era? Sure. But What I Like About You is pretty great. Number four, Party Down. Here's another hilarious series that was practically ignored. He's fine, you're not impressed. A little higher, maybe? Okay. <laughs> Party Down is a workplace comedy about a catering team filled with primarily unemployed actors who are known for stumbling their way from one assignment to the next. The excellent cast is filled with recognizable comedy actors, but Party Down truly shines in its clever writing and irreverent humor. So you said you got chicken what? Fingers. Chicken fingers. Yeah. Shit. Critics generally responded positively to Stars' comedy, but Party Down never really found much of an audience. As far as single camera comedies go, Party Down is not only among the genre's funnier offerings, but also one of the more subtly sad. I mean, who is that crazy kid with those dumb ideas? <sighs> I was gonna collect more frogs than anybody else in the world. Number three, Clone High. A cartoon set in a government-controlled high school filled with clones of historical figures like Abraham Lincoln, Joan of Arc, and Gandhi, Clone High only managed to explore its refreshingly original premise for 13 episodes before getting the can. Are those longer sideburns? <laughs> Along with garnering some pushback due to Gandhi's depiction, Clone High may have benefited from airing on a channel like Comedy Central or through a streaming service a few years later. Okay, the line is, say what? Say what? Say what? Say what? Say, say what? what? Say what? Say what? Got it! In 2002, the peculiar cartoon was lost at sea on MTV and was pulled off the air before anyone knew that Clone High even existed. Marketing brings the coin. Marketing, eh? Number two, The Comeback. With a title like The Comeback, frankly, this HBO series was tempting fate from the get-go. This is my comeback. <sighs> you know what, I wanna do another. Starring Lisa Kudrow as a washed-up sitcom actress who agrees to do a reality program capturing her long-awaited return to television. The comeback takes its meta premise, sprinkles a dash of social satire, and just goes to town on showbiz's less savory side. Is this a reality show? Yes, it is. Uh-huh. I'm not really interested in being on it. Let me see if I can get someone who would be. Kudrow is uncomfortably hilarious as Valerie Cherish, but in 2005, the comeback may have been slightly ahead of the curve. It was canceled after one season, only to be brought back for a new batch of episodes in 2014 before once again prematurely bowing out. Cold breathing, it's so stupid. Ooh. You dropped your mic. Personally, I watched the heck out of the new Adventures of Old Christine and What I Like About You. But people keep telling me I'd love Clone High, so I gotta check that out. Which show from the 2000s is most underrated according to you? Let us know in the comments. But what about according to us? Let's see some honorable mentions and then we shall see our number one pick. Do you hate cops? Oh, yeah. Well, I hate cops too. We need a mouse that can withstand temperatures up to 195 degrees. We can do that. A uh, computer mouse or a live mouse? I'll get back to you. You don't even know it, but you're getting a second chance to not kill two people, so just give me the gun. spent nearly every weekend together since first grade. We are synchronized. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pushing Daisies Few shows can truly be described as one of a kind, but Pushing Daisies is all about defying expectations. Lasting a painfully short 22 episodes, Pushing Daisies, which follows a pie maker who can bring back the dead with a single touch or take it away with another, accomplishes a staggering amount in such a brief time. Oh! ABC's series is simultaneously an episodic procedural, a surreal comedy, a deep character study, and an uplifting fairy tale, with Pushing Daisies juggling all these elements effortlessly to create a whole that is nothing less than enchanting. <gasps> Chuck! Despite only lasting two seasons, Pushing Daisies took home seven Emmys before being cut short due to low ratings. That was way too easy. Oh yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.